calling it, quote, a very significant step forward for basic rights. The Archbishop of San Francisco responds to the Supreme Court's decision striking down California's ban on indoor worship. The 6-3 to three decision by the high court allows the state to limit attendance to 25 percent of a building's capacity. It also keeps restrictions on singing and chanting in place. Archbishop Salvatore Cordilion of the Archdiocese of San Francisco joins me now on Skype to talk more about the significance of this ruling. Your Excellency, welcome back. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, tell us, what does this decision allowing indoor worship in California, what does it represent for Catholics? And personally, what does it mean for you? It represents for all people of faith that the First Amendment of the Constitution matters and that the right to religious freedom cannot be curtailed. And worship is the most basic part of that. Religious freedom means many things, but worship is at the heart of it. And the state cannot uh, intrude on our right to worship, although we must do safely and we can do so safely. So for Catholics, this is a, a, a wonderful news that we can, we can continue to worship and now we can be inside of church without worrying about government harassing us for worshiping, up, worshiping inside of church because obviously as Catholics, we can't really worship live stream. That's it's kind of a makeshift substitute, but it could only be temporary. You cannot live stream the sacraments. You cannot receive them virtually. So this is very critical for us as Catholics and for all Christians, I mean, the church is means literally an assembly, ecclesia, is an assembly of people gathered together. This is our identity as Christians being to gathered together as members of the body of Christ. So this is a, an acknowledgement that our right uh, to worship cannot be curtailed. It does have to be regulated, and we accept the necessity for uh, certain restrictions to observe safety protocols to uh, ensure public health, but we can do it in a safe way, and we shall. And I'm curious, what's been the reaction from your flock? What have people been saying? I've received much uh, uh, thanks, uh, much uh, appreciation and, and happiness uh, from the people here in the Archdiocese. Uh, people are very happy to be able to return to worship inside. I had already given my priest permission to go inside before Christmas uh, when I saw the direction the court decisions were going. and. I've been insisting all along, the state does not have the right to tell us we can't worship. It has the right to tell us what we have to do to keep people safe, but those restrictions cannot be so severe as to effectively ban public worship. I ask the priest to continue to celebrate mass outdoors whenever possible, but if it's safer for the people to be indoors, than to take them indoors because we can do it safely indoors as well. Outdoors as, as an extra safety precaution. So this is why I say we can now uh, worship indoors, but we have, the uh, court decision that uh, protects us from government harassment. But again, we must do so safely. Uh, as you know, uh, Justice Neil Gorsuch wrote in part in his opinion, quote, if Hollywood may host a studio audience or film uh, a singing competition, while not a single soul may enter California's churches, synagogues, and mosques, something has gone seriously awry. I'd like to get your thoughts on that. And what do you think the Supreme Court's decision signals to government officials in California? It signals that they must treat religion at least equally to secular activities. Now, I know there's this debate about what is what is worship comparable to? What type of secular activity? And I know in this dissenting opinion, they uh, they took the position that uh, people going into a store there briefly and they leave. That happens sometimes. It doesn't happen all the time. So it's it's a very complex thing. The the example of our of a large cathedral such as St. Mary's here here in San Francisco, it is large and cavernous. We could have hundreds of people in there and make sure that they're safe. That's different from a smaller church, say, with a, a low ceiling without many windows for ventilation. So it's much more complex than some kind of a simplistic solution. Uh, but, but the insistence that we be treated uh, at least equally as uh, favored secular activities is, I think, at what is at the heart of this decision. And we have not been treated that way. I'd like something else very much that uh, Justice Gorsuch said in his decision when I think he hit the nail on the head in terms of how uh, uh, faith communities have been treated because 
they keep saying we're going to open up and, and then, then we don't, or they, they step back. He said, government actors have been moving the goalposts on pandemic related services, sacrifices for months, uh, adopting new benchmarks that always seem to put restoration of liberty just around the corner, but it never quite comes. Uh, so we're grateful that we're being treated equally as others. Indeed. Well, thank you so much, Your Excellency, for coming on. We really appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.